people ask me, how'd you get on Joe Rogan? I'm like, that shit was magic. Mm-hmm. It was magical. God meant for that to happen. What's your concept of God? What's your understanding? My of concept God? of God is beyond that physical bull. If we were to use words, you have to use the word unfathomable. In fact, it is counterproductive for you to try to understand God. It is more productive for you to be God than try to understand God. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Mike Rasheed. This is the Lions, Owls, and Elephants podcast. I got my brother, Mr. Gator, in the building. And we have a very special guest all the way from the land of Kemet. <laughs> he, he goes by the affectionate name of... Hotel Jesus. What's up, sir? Thanks for coming down. I appreciate you for having me. Yo, welcome, it's a, it's welcome. A, it's a pleasure to have it's you here. It's a blessing to be here. Indeed, you, indeed. You're, you, you've been a gracious host, and I've only been here hey, about a know, few minutes. I do what I, I do what I can. I hey, do what I can. Look, man, you, you're a dope dude. You're Listen, I got to say this. We've been having some dope people on. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Consistently. You know what I'm saying? And you, you're raising the vibration even more, so very happy to be here. So let's dive into the obvious because people are like, what is Hope Tech Jesus? What does that mean? Yeah. Can we get into the science behind your name or how you acquired that attribute? The best nicknames are exonyms. Um, exonyms are when the name of a thing comes from outside of itself. So Hotep Jesus is an exonym. I didn't give myself the name. My haters did. And um, when, he, when I saw it on my screen, it was just like, Somebody said, what do you think you are? Some sort of Hotep Jesus? Oh, that's great. That's so and good. And I just looked at it, and I was staring at the screen. They, they lobbed you a, a layup. And I just snatched it and just changed my act, like, right on the spot. Like, what yeah. Made them, what made them say that? Because that's a good name. I had went through a spiritual awakening, man. It was one of the best, worst things in my life. Um, I was vegan and all types of stuff, man. Great period of my life. But I just, was just very um, spiritual. I was very much into the yoga and meditation and being at peace with my soul. How I found you was on Rogan. The right. your first, I think you was on there twice. Yes. Or three. Okay. Twice. Twice. Yeah. So the first, so it was the first time you was on there. I saw you, and you were talking about. Uh, he was like, "What are you talking about?" But you were saying how black people did not come here as slaves. Yes. Yeah. Right. We were not brought here on slave ships that's not economically sound this what do you mean sense uh so when christopher columbus got here wanted to well, christopher columbus got to the caribbean uh, according to a primary source right they basically said the first thing he did was take slaves he didn't bring slaves he took slaves from the island he captured people so when you have colonization you gotta remember the united states was only built 13 colonies at first right you think this whole land was empty no, there were natives here. Right. But today we're taught that natives are some other people. No, natives are the melanated African being that has come here since the, 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 the beginning of the Mali Empire. We're talking about uh, 14th, 13th century. We had already come here from Africa. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had already come here. First Americans were Africans. So in this book, he speaks of a tribe First of all, they call this Turtle Island, mm-hmm. but they, they speak of the tribe and the tribe is on the east coast of America. And they ask them, well, where do you people come from? And they say, we come from the east and the, the east coast uh, the east of the east coast is West Africa. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's a lot of uh, a whole lot of evidence just within this document. Like if somebody mm-hmm. wanted to debate me, I could study this book and I will destroy you. Right now, I've done a, a bit of research on that myself um, and it do there. There is clear like documentation and evidence of some of us coming through that route. Yeah. But that's not all. Right. There's a lot of information showing that we were here previous to that, prior to that. Yes. At least a couple hundred years before Columbus. Right. right? 
Columbus even acknowledges it in his journal. Continually grown to indicate that many of these pre-Columbian explorers might have come from Africa. For example, he pointed out that Columbus himself was aware that African mariners had preceded him. In his diary of his second voyage, uh, Columbus tells of how the natives of Hispaniola actually had given him gold-tipped metal spearheads that they said were brought by black-skinned people who had come in large boats from the south and southeast. Hmm. Coincidence? I think not. No. So uh, what's interesting about that, so upon returning to Spain, is that he actually took the spearheads and he, uh, he sent them away and they had them uh, assayed and it turned out to be that they, uh, uh, the, these spearheads were covered in this metal, that, uh, this alloy that the inhabitants called guanin and uh, the metallurgists uh, actually found out that this was an alloy of 32 parts. It was like 18 of gold, six of silver, eight of copper, which dun 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 match the metal used in spearheads made in Western Africa for thousands of years as carried by medieval African warriors, including the Mali and the Moors. The West Africans even called this metal guanine, the same name used by the natives of Hispaniola. Yes. You know, and it's, it's interesting that this is not talked about, that he even had Ghanaian navigators helping him get over here. So, like you said, east of the East Coast is West Africa, the, the, the westernmost tip of Africa or Ghana, if you look at it, there's a, there's a straight a straight path and not a far route from Ghana to Brazil. The Portuguese, like Captain Pereira, had heard that African traders were visiting Brazil in the mid 1400s. So to demonstrate that mariners from West Africa could have sailed to the Americas using papyrus vessels as early as 2000 BCE, and our region uh, adventurer Tor Heyerdahl actually used ancient shipbuilding techniques in order to construct and sail the Ra 1 and the Ra 2 in 1969 and 70. And generally, some type of sailing vessel um, will average about 100 miles per day, even without sails. And in an ocean current, uh, something like a raft or a reed boat can... Uh, can average about 60 miles a day. Now, Islamic historian Amir Hajib reported that voyages west from Mali were happening in the year 1311, just uh, 150 years before Columbus. We don't need to have a discussion. This is the guy you said discovered America, okay? This is his letter back to his financiers, because mm -hmm. he was broke, he was a running boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm He's mm -hmm. running boy. He the fall guy, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. Here, put it on He's him. He's doing a job. Put, yeah, put the, give him the credit, because I don't want people to know I'm doing this shit. That's what's happening mm -hmm. with, with Columbus's story. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a non-entity, mm -hmm. right? But if you read his letter, in his letter to Descent Angel, he says, when I ran across these people, they had a boat the size of an 18 oared galley. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty damn big boat. Yeah. Now, the Guyanaans were excellent sailors. You know, that's yes. what they were known for. Yes. And even, I don't know if you heard of Mansa Musa. I'm sure you right. have. Well, his brother, before he was king, his brother was the king. Abu Bukhari. Abu Bukhari. And he gave him, he passed on his the crown to Mansa. Yeah. Because his love was, was sailing. You yes. know what I'm saying? And he's been here. And he went out. Right. He so they, they found, they, they found, this is what they, here's the evidence, the archaeological evidence. They found, first of all, they found in mummified bodies in West Africa, Central Africa, and Northern Africa. Yes. Cocaine, tobacco, opium, mm. drugs that are native to South America. Yeah. It doesn't grow on that side of the planet. So it showed evidence of them coming here, trading, going back, you mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. Here uh, in, in America and Mexico, they found golden tip spears, mm -hmm. like the ones in uh, Mali, right. right? They found uh, helmets, like the ones in Mali as well, in Nubia. And we can't forget about the Omex. Mm -hmm. and the, these these gigantic gargantuan sta statue heads yeah. of Africans, right, that yeah. predate Mexican civilizations. Yeah. So it's a lot that's not talked about in, in school, but right. that's why I love the internet because there are little beacons of light, of truth, you know, really talking about real history because, listen, people have rewrote for certain reasons. Right. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. During times of colonization, you had to diminish the achievements of dark people to justify 
using them as, Napoleon. as cattle. As cattle. Napoleon so, was a beast, man. Yeah, he's Napoleon part of that too. Yep. He's a genius in many ways. He is an evil genius. Yeah. He's a little short evil genius. How do yeah. you how do you separate cuz you were saying that you don't care to not care, but you don't it's not a passion to try and convince someone to see things how you see them. Yeah. But with something like as important as this or or as potentially important to this for how people view themselves and how they recollect history, how do you separate the, the, like you said, you're okay with people just not not seeing it your way versus they got to be exposed to the information? Uh, People who want my opinion and people who don't. It's something called unsolicited advice and unsolicited opinions. Right. You got to cut me a check for my opinion. I was going to say, so you put it out in your in your content, your messaging, and yeah. if people want to know more or if they really like it, you're counting on them to, of course, want to further that conversation with you. Yeah. But not, I guess you're saying you're not, you're not trying to go out to people who say otherwise and right. convince them. No. But if people want to learn, they're welcome to come it's, and, and it's, hear it's, your, it's, it's counterproductive. your knowledge. It's counterproductive to my, to my goals. My goals is to help humanity. If I'm out here spending time with somebody who's my opposition, that means there's somebody who's on my side that ain't getting assistance. I don't have time to argue with you. Somebody over here needs me. Yeah. But I'm over here messing with you. We building over here. I'm not distracted by my enemies. I'm not distracted by my haters. And I'm that, focused. And that, at the end of the day, that's an exercise in futility going to hostile territory or hostile grounds <laughs> with opposing positions just trying to convince people. No. I, here's the thing. Here's a re- This is what I've noticed in life. Like, if you have the truth, stand on it. Right. And that's it. Yeah. Right? Over time, those who don't agree with the truth, it's okay because it doesn't change reality, right? But typically, especially if they got an inkling of goodness in them, yeah. at some point they're going to see the truth and they're going to come over into that space. Right. Yeah, the truth without, always going to light. Without having to convince anybody. Truth always come to light. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. A lie going to get around the world before the truth get its shoes on, but the truth coming. Exactly. It's coming. <laughs> it's real. It's, it's going to be late, but it's cool. I think we, we practice a lot of the same idea in the sense that you're not going to find us seeking out people who are oppo- of opposing opinion to argue with them. We don't do that. We, we'll put out the information that we think is the best information, mm. whether it's relating to health or fitness or, or anything lifestyle-oriented or personal growth. And then some people will, will disagree. They'll come to us usually, but we're not going to people of opposing opinion and be like, you're wrong and here's why. Yeah. We don't spend any time on that if, if I'm thinking out loud. No, no. No. Yeah. I live a life of goodness. And, and from the goodness, things sort of just... Coalesce and happen for you. Yeah, for like sure. it's it's sort of magical. Like people ask me, how'd you get on Joe Rogan? I'm like, that shit was magic. Mm-hmm. It was magical. God meant for that to happen. What's your what's your concept of God? What's your understanding? My of concept God? of God is beyond that physical bull, right? My concept of God is I guess we can call it cosmic consciousness. Some people might call it infinite intelligence, right? Um, when you're on the path, you know, sometimes I call it the God frequency. That's when you're like in tune and you're like right in line and you're everything's buzzing for you. You know what I'm saying? You can do no wrong. Um, but it's a, it's a God is is a, to be def- if we were to use words, you have to use the word unfathomable. In fact, it is counterproductive for you to try to understand God. It is more productive for you to be God than try to understand God. Why is that? Explain. For example, because how can you me, be how can you be something that you don't understand? People ask me. They say, "Do you believe in God?" And I say, "No. I know God." Well, what's the difference? Well, belief means you could not believe right like belief like believe is somebody can change your opinion but if i know you like no i know this person or this thing and i've interacted and i've had a real experience to believe is theoretical knowing is i've experimented with this thing knowing to know you can uh there's evidence there's objective truth that no one is undeniable Right, it's undeniable. Right. Yes, right. for me, it's undeniable. Right, mm-hmm. it's subjectively objective. <laughs> so, Sean, what's what's 
God to you? What's the concept of God to you? What does that mean? Well, for me, I, I think about what I am and what I know and what I think we uh, as a group know. And I always just, I always put God to be the the missing piece between that, which we are, and, and everything else. Mm. Like, so it's like I, I think about the fact that we keep knowing more things than we used to know, mm. like as a species or as a collective, as a society, we keep learning and we keep eliminating this gap between what what we know and don't know and getting closer to, to what our understanding would we, would want to be. But to your point, it's probably un attainable this this thing that we we don't understand what we don't understand like how am i supposed to explain to you the experience i had with god without using some words that's gonna misconstrue what really happened words cannot put you cannot put what it happened to me and god and the god power the god conscious whatever you want to call it the cosmic i don't know what well, i'm gonna tell you i do magic but, going, if but, I but, if I sit up here and say, "Yo, I do magic," I mean, magic is a thing. But that, but, but if I said it, people would be like, "Oh, this guy thinks he's a magician." Nah, but I don't the thing think so. is, the magic ain't me. The magic is God. It's just that I'm connected to it. Okay, let me let me. I'm in service to it. Let's walk down the path. So I hear you. Mm -hmm. You have this experience, yes. right? So I don't think that it's unreasonable for you to be able to. Uh, articulate what you experienced because you experienced it. Yes, I can articulate it, but it'll never come close to what I feel. That's interesting you say that. Let me tell you why. <laughs> so lately I've been, so we fast. We have a collective fast we do on Wednesdays, right? So outside of the physiological benefits, for me personally, I have more spiritual and mental things that I'm looking to achieve for my sacrifice, right? And what it is right now and it can change over time but uh it's my ability to communicate better mm. right so i see language as an inferior means of communication yes right? language often falls short for many of us and we sometimes refer to a foreign language to try to explain something why is it that my thinking process or my experiential process cannot be articulated with language. We have been communicating. This is stupid. We communicated before language, right? Babies who don't know language yet can communicate. We think a lot without words, without language, right? So you got to do it with children, right? So I'm working on figuring out how to communicate, articulating what's on my heart and my mind yeah. better, right? Yeah. Maybe it's not a word. And also receiving information, communication from others, because sometimes the, the words is not truthful to what the heart is trying to convey, right? And it's not truth, it's not a lie in a, in a, a, a deceptive way. Mm. It's just that this is the best way that this person can communicate what they're feeling. So I understand what you're saying in that, um, not being able to articulate what you feel. Because there's times I'm, ha I'm having a conversation with people and I'm saying it wrong. And I know I'm fucking up. Yeah. But now I'm not saying it. I'm like, I'm, I don't know how to say this right now. Let me give me some time. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm working on. And I'm getting, you know, I'm getting better, you know. But, um, but yeah, it's interesting. I would like, it would have been nice to hear your experience. Can we have a conversation about why I can't have a conversation with a liberal? Do you feel you can have a conversation with a liberal? I've tried. They won't talk to you? I'm basically blackballed. If if they post anything, it's gonna be slander. Mm. Why why is that? <laughs> I think it's because they don't want a resurgence of um let's call it nationalism. Mm -hmm. Okay. I call I describe nationalism as tribalism. Mm -hmm. But what they don't want is independent states. Mm -hmm. They want is dependence. They want people dependent. And we're very much a message that is about independence. And if we could become, become popular, we might make being independent popular. And oh, my God, people might not need the government anymore mm -hmm. or they'll need it less. So right? do you feel like the states are not independent now? Independent of what? Of they are the tied government. by the Constitution. We have the United States. They are united. True. However, yeah, that's true. So would you prefer succession in all 50 states? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
So each state its own sovereign entity. Yes. Country. Yes. So how do you feel about Europe? Because look, Europe in many ways is that's why they try to create the European Union, right? Mm-hmm. Some of these countries you could fit them in in New Jersey. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but here's the thing, though, because all right, let's say let's break up the fifty states, right? Yeah. And for the record, I'm not a proponent of none, no system. I don't care. I believe, but but hear me out. Hear me out. Yeah. Like you said, a lot of countries are small as our cities, right? Yeah. So, all right, boom, fifty countries, right? Uh over there, there's a bunch of countries, right? Yeah. To me, is I don't want, I wouldn't want borders of to be bordered by potential enemies. You know what I'm saying? Correct. So over here, we're very safe. This yes. is, you know, we have two oceans and two weak neighbors, Mexico and Canada. Can yes. do nothing to us, right? Mm-hmm. Canada don't even have a military. It's crazy. <laughs> you know, like, don't worry about it, guys. So anyway, but you know, over in Europe, you have Russia, Ukraine. You have. Afghanistan, USSR back in the day. You have so many volatile situations where your neighbors are right now. Your your neighbors are your enemies. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Is that would that not be a concern of yours if this was a bunch of countries? No, because I wouldn't run the country like that. I would again. If the United States of America is a corporation, let's treat it as such. Right? Let's stop treating it like a school project. Let's take this thing serious, okay? And let's say, look, you have a DOD, you got a CIA, a DIA, whatever these entities are. Let's hire them. We can have a United Federation of Defense. (laughs) For all the states, all the The only thing I want from America is the defense. They can keep everything else. As what, long as you keep kicking everybody else's ass. What is this that you don't like now? What don't you like about the system now and the setup? They kicking my ass. How so? Oh, man. Okay. I always like to go to this example. Poor Tanisha. Tanisha do mean braids. She can do the Iversons with one hand. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right? In an hour. But if she does the braids out of her house because she can't afford rent, we're going to find her. She's already poor. Okay, let me let me interject. I don't mm-hmm. want to cut you off. Yeah. Respectfully. We both know a lot of Tanisha's that braid. Yeah. My son gets his hair braided in our house all the time. Right. right? This is never any fines. Technically, yeah, that exists, right? Right. I know so many girls that do lashes, they do micro needling, whatever the fuck. All of the shit out of their home, whatever. I go to a lady that does never, it out of her home. I've never seen anybody getting a fine. It's when you take it to the next level. When you start bringing in employees and, oh, this is a residential neighborhood. Mm. I get all of that. I get all mm. of that. But let's take it to the next level. That's the lower level. Okay. The next level is I want to be my own bank. Mm-hmm. I want to create my own currency. Mm-hmm. Your own currency. Okay. Cryptocurrency. Okay. She. But what do you mean? Let's say. No, why you say she? Because. Okay. People so, are doing that. People are doing that. Right. Okay. Now that's cool. Now, what if I want to sell Bitcoin? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So I created my own coin. I've moved it into Bitcoin. Now I want to sell my Bitcoin. What do you mean moved it into Bitcoin? You I could s- do pancake swap. You, you sold it and sold bought it, it and bought Bitcoin. Right. With, okay. Yeah. Let's say I did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That means your coin has a value, right? Yeah. Okay. And then I I, 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 I accumulated a bunch of Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. And now I want to become a seller of it. Mm-hmm. They're going to charge me all types of... Certificate Ooh. licenses, Ooh. SEC, Vincent. They don't do that. Why would they do that? You need a money transmitter license, according to Vincent. To sell your cryptocurrency? Not mine. Well, for people to sell this scenario? The bitcoins. The bitcoins and the. Yeah, I've been buying and selling. I've never gotten any of that. I've never had to do anything. No, and what I'm saying is, as a bank, mm-hmm. doing it as a bank, mm-hmm. 
What, what would be the purpose of doing it as a bank? Same reason why you do it in the other bank. Okay, so let's say, all right. Let's say you want to leverage the capital. Let's say, all right, doing it as a bank, you have to report to the SEC, right? Yeah. Why not do it as a private entity, as a person, where you don't have to report it to the SEC? This, this is what I'm saying. The problem is when you start dealing with bank accounts, mm-hmm. Once you tap into that bank account system, that's that's where shit get crazy, right? When well, you start, you have a certain level of protection with a business account. But listen, fuck a fuck a bank. No, what that's I'm, why blockchain what I exists. Want, what I want to do is see they have this like proprietary thing they call the U.S. dollar, mm-hmm. right? And then once you start playing in that game, it's kind of like oh, I need a money transmitter license to start moving that currency, especially right. when I start dealing with. Let's say I want to take your money, mm-hmm. right? You give me $10 mm-hmm. and I go buy Bitcoin for you. It's money, money transmit. They're going to they gonna, they gonna say I need a license for that, right? But it's a, it's a viable business. Why mm-hmm. people aren't allowed to do that? These are some of the things that I say that the bureaucracy is like holding people back. You know, another thing is like how crazy they be doing with the taxes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even when you start dealing with the currency itself and the blatant disregard the fundamental econ for example like recently the fed just raised the interest rates 0.7 bips okay during a financial crisis according to thomas Sowell in chapter 16 of basic economics you wouldn't pass an econ one class doing that you would do the opposite you would open up credit what they do is or what you should do is when the economy's booming, right? Now maybe you want to try and contract the supply. What they do is they print money in the boom and they print and then they print more money and then they raise interest rates. So for example, I'll show you how, how it's funny. The same week they raised interest rate and tried to um, practice deflation, right? Which is gonna affect home buyers, right? People that want money, people that want cheap money. It's going to affect them. The same week, the United States government cuts a billion dollars to the Ukraine. Okay. Blatant disregard for the currency that I'm, I'm right, working for. I'm with you, right? But mm-hmm. I also see it different, right? Mm-hmm. I'll explain. Now, when it comes to, let's say I want to create my own currency. Yeah. A cryptocurrency. Yeah. Now, I haven't done this personally, but it's it's written in one of my possible uh, uh, things that I'm going to do in the near future, right? Yeah. But I was a a part of a project just as an investor um, of someone who created their own cryptocurrency. Yeah, I have my own. And it became very valuable. You know what I'm saying? So, And it's outside of the scope of the SEC, all of that, as long as it stays on the blockchain. Correct. And I do a lot of transactions within the blockchain paying for goods and services right. that are not taxed, right? Correct. So, you know, we have this is this is what I love about here. Right. It's the it's a way around everything. Like Trump said it himself when they try to call him out on his taxes. Yeah, but they you, say, hey, but, I'm just but, smart. But, but, but y'all created the, these laws. But look at the question you asked me. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. The question you asked me specifically, what is it that you don't like about okay, the well, government? Right, 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 right. So I'm just answering the question. I'm not saying like mm. we not fucking with the blockchain because I'm all on the blockchain. You don't like the fact. What is it? Is I'm it just saying if we were clear. to critique and, and pick apart mm. what's wrong with the government, mm-hmm. these are the places I'm starting. Mm-hmm. Like if the money ain't free, the people ain't free. You stealing labor from so, people. So like with the regulations... You don't like probably right the to, regulations, the mandates. I didn't even want to get there. Like I'm, I'm starting at the fundamentals. You have messed up the currency that I have worked for. The currency I worked for and saved up ten years ago is worth half. So I, basically, I worked ten years for five. For your money, like not really though. How? I don't care how much money you make. How is your money worth half now? I mean, if if if, if you have. A dollar, right? Mm-hmm. And today the dollar gets you a loaf of bread. Mm-hmm. But 10 years from now, that same dollar gets you a half a loaf of bread. Mm-hmm. However, the rate in which whatever it took for you to get that dollar now yeah. versus or or whatever the value of a loaf of bread is, yeah. it's going to be matched in 10 years. It's not the, the Our earning potential is not going to stay the same in 10 years. I'm speaking straight math. 
Mm. I'm not adding the human aspect. Straight math. The numbers don't add up, Mike. But it never <laughs> has, though. But but here's the thing. But Inflation. If we're going to pick apart the government. But, but we got to be honest with the conversation, though. People make more money now than they did 10 years ago. Is that not a fact? Well, that's the whole point. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm. You have to increase salaries to keep up with inflation. <laughs> inflation. But it happens. Yes. Mm. But it doesn't happen at the same rate. Okay. Well, okay. I hear you, bro. But that doesn't affect you. You're an entrepreneur. Okay. You don't have a salary somewhere where you're getting quarterly. It does affect me. How does it affect you? Negatively. Because I could take what my dollar should be worth mm-hmm. and put it in a calculator and calculate it. You still in my money, B, off principle. <laughs> off principle. Nope, you playing with the money. So what's, what is your resolution? Oh, no, we just blockchain it, right? You just blockchain it. Like the, mm-hmm. You just go around. like you, like you th- That's my philosophy. Then I don't see the problem. Again, Mike, you asked me. Okay. I hear you. What don't I like about the government? I hear you. Right. But there's a fix for that. Well, that's the Hotep way. Mm-hmm. Right? The Hotep way is... I like the Hotep way. The right. blockchain. We right? just go around it. Like, we just make you obsolete. And that's, that's, that's in every sector of this country. It's the ability... Well, we, we were talking in the yeah. car earlier. I said I did not exist until 2014-15. Right. I, was, I was a ghost. Yeah. Hood black ops. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and there's a lot of people like me. That never get back on the grid. You know what I mean? Right. So, I guess the fact that I've been through so much uh, that people would consider undesirable circumstances. Mm. But for me, it was just normal Mm. and always figured it out. Mm -hmm. That's how I see this country. This is a great place to figure shit out. Yes, it is. Unlike certain places. Oh, absolutely. God bless America. I was just speaking to somebody. Oh, uh, the guy at the gym from Russia from when it was USSR. He said they were people were afraid to say anything about their country in their house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was yeah. so on lock. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Here people say, fuck the president, suck a dick. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The president can say that, grab the pussy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a wild place, but I love it. I fucks with it. I do see the essential nature of what you're saying your problem is with the system. Uh, if you play by the exact narrative that you're told to play by which is to work hard and if do you your best if if you you, and if you don't if you don't try and break the game mm-hmm. you know and do do your own way and, and surpass it you you get caught in this system of trying to produce and yet the the production will never match up with the current standard because the current standard continues right. to elevate it moves up faster yeah and yeah. even if it was at the same rate still you're always yeah. behind the yeah. people who are ahead mm-hmm. uh, and i can see why why that's you know really upsetting and it is that's why it's almost like our job to for ourselves our families our loved ones and then anyone who wants to listen talk about how we can break that cycle mm-hmm. uh, and get away from that standard it's not reasonable for everyone to break the cycle though it couldn't happen you know just like av- laws of averages, right? We're always going to have a big chunk of the population that's just following. They just do what they're told. Absolutely. They, it, it's always been like that. Yeah. It's like that. And I can't see it ever not being like that. Right. People are afraid. We were talking about this in the car, right? Mm-hmm. I said, you know, when you, you had Hotep Khan, that's yeah. what it's called, right? Yeah. Last year, and it was incredible. You had people, everybody had Hotep on their Twitter handle. Right. You know? They wanted to be a part of something. Right. People, the comfortable state of nature and existence for animals, for all animals on this planet, yeah. is to be efficient. Yeah. And efficient is not, let's say, doing what we do, getting up early in the morning to train, reading extra shit to learn, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Working all these hours. Efficiency is being sitting back, being comfortable and lazy, move when you need to, get a little bit of food because I'm hungry, sit back. And what should we do next? Yeah. Come here, y'all. I'll tell y'all. You know what I'm saying? People, people, there's a comfort in people being led. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And that's okay. I don't, I don't, I'll never look at someone in that position as bad or stupid or y'all dumb, y'all slow, y'all sheep. I hate when people call people sheep because it's like, yo, these are people who, this is where they're at. And this is what they're comfortable with. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's other psychopaths like us that, you know, 
will work a bunch of fucking hours and try to produce products and services for people. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just how it is. There's a small amount of people that do that. To do a lot for a big amount of people. Yes. That big amount of people afford the small amount of people uh, uh, good lives. You know what I'm saying? To be Correct. honest. Yes. You know, and it's always going to be like that. Yes. It's always going to be like that. Yeah.